welcome to all of you to the course on VLSI physical design with timing analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about various steps of the VLSI physical design. So, the main objective of the course is to uh, discuss the various steps and uh, flows of the VLSI design and VLSI physical design flow. Then we will also discuss about uh, different uh, very basics of the graph theory and algorithms that are applicable for VLSI physical design and we will explore the basic principle of uh, static timing analysis and how we can apply those uh, principle to the VLSI physical design. The various steps uh, are involved in the VLSI physical design such as uh, partitioning, chip planning, placement, clock tree synthesis and uh, routing all these steps will be discussed in de detail. Then we will discuss about uh, the open source tools available in the open domain for the VLSI physical design which will be useful such that everybody can use that tools for the uh, to learn what is the basic principle involved in VLSI physical design. Then uh, finally, we will uh, discuss some of the advanced topic like statistical static timing analysis. After going through the objective of this course then comes to the mind why we study this uh, VLSI physical design. So, the what is the significance of VLSI physical design. So, if you can look into this slide, we have uh, several processor from different companies and what is the transistor count inside that design. If you can see Pentium 4 from Intel has uh, 42 uh, billion transistors. In the other hand, uh, in 2023, we have a processor from AMD which is having 146 billion transistor. So, we have huge number of increase of transistor inside the chip. So, how to design and how to handle those transistors such that it can meet the DRC, LVS and all the rules at the same time meet the specification of the processor. It is a challenging task. So, if you can look into some of the layouts of the chip, it is so complex. For example, in 1974, Intel 8080 processor is the, this is the layout of that one. You see how complex it is. Then if you can see uh, 2000 Intel Pentium 4 layout, it has huge number of transistor inside it. So, if you integrate it uh, using custom manner or manual method, it is impossible to design the chip and launch the product in the market. If you can go into the Intel uh, Core i7 processor, it is the internal die photo, it has 4 cores, this uh, 4 cores 1, 2, 3, 4 and all of these are designed using physical design flow, physical synthesis flow. So, this motivates to learn uh, this course, why it is important to learn this uh, VLSI physical design and how it is useful for modern chip designs. So, the content of this course includes uh, the basically the VLSI uh, design style, what are the different design styles are applicable for various types of designs and uh, design abstraction, what are the different abstraction labels we need to go through in order to design a bigger design and synthesis which is basically converting a uh, different levels of abstraction to the lower level details uh, we will discuss in this uh, lecture. So, the first we will start with uh, 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 different design style. The design style is divided into two main category, one is the full custom and the semi custom. The, this, uh, the, these two are the main driving force behind uh, our chip design. So, the choice of the layout style depends upon various factors such as the type of the chip, cost, uh, how much cost is in, involved in that uh, uh, product or the manufacturing of the chip and how much time available for the designer to make the uh, make the design to the market. So, time to market is one of the driving force behind the which uh, design style we should adopt. For example, uh, we need to launch a product in a one, uh, one uh, year uh, time frame or two years time frame then the, uh, then, then the semi custom design style is the most preferred one. Full custom design will require more detailed uh, design and it will be more optimized however, it takes more time to design. We will discuss these uh, uh, things in more detail in the subsequent slides. 
So, the uh, de uh, design styles is mainly divided into full custom uh, where we do the layout of the chip uh, mostly manually, most of the uh, layouts are done manually. And in case of semi custom, some prefabricated designs are available from third party companies and some cases some bigger companies they design their own prefabricated designs those are useful and those are used in the design flow. So, again the semi custom is divided into two category one is cell based okay, and one is array based. When ca in case of cell based we have a uh, particular types of cells are there which is used in the design process. In, uh, in case of array based the same uh, primitive is repeated uh, multiple times inside the chip. We will so, uh, see some of the examples. So, the cell based is again divided into standard cells and compiled cells, then macro cells. Then the array based is divided into uh, pre diffused uh, that is called the gate arrays and pre wired which is FPGAs. Let us discuss the full custom design style. So, the main idea behind the full custom design style is that we need to design majority of the uh, major part of the design manually. And uh, in this case, we have less uh, constraint in placing the design in the chip area. We do not have any constraint in the size of the design. One thing, the layout should be layouts are drawn manually. Second, no constraint in size, the no constraint in size of the design. Then third, no placement constraint. So, no placement constraint means that you can place it any part of the design based on the best routing resources available to that design. And if you can see here, we have a A to D converter okay, which is placed close to the I O which is uh, uh, there. Okay, and uh, its shape is determined based on the how it can be optimized properly in the layout. So, this one is done uh, complete um, uh, custom, uh, custom manner that is called full, full custom design style. Similarly, if you uh, in this one if you can see majority of the blocks like data path, ROM, RAM, PLA, random logic all are of different shapes. There is no particular shapes uh, involved here. But they are placed based on uh, how we can optimize the design uh, in the chip itself. And if you can see the there is some channels are available for routing or connecting those blocks in case of full custom design style. So, if you go by the full custom design style, you, you can uh, design a compact chip and it has highly optimized electrical properties, your speed may be higher. However, nothing comes free means it is uh, time consuming and it, uh, it is highly uh, laborious work and there may be chance of error while designing this. So, in one end you will get a very high speed design, in other end it will take very long time to design, you may lose the time to market in which cases it is useful. Basically, if you can see in case of a processor, let us say most of the part of the processor it de is designed using a uh, semi custom manner using VLSI physical design flow, but some of the critical paths or data paths which detects the speed of the processor need can be designed in a full custom manner to optimize the speed of the processor and improve the speed of the processor such that we can meet the specification of the processor. So, not the complete processor is, is designed full custom manner, 
only the critical paths or the data paths which is uh, detecting the speed of the processor that can be designed in a full custom manner to improve the speed. Similarly, in case of FPGAs, the switch matrix, the switch matrix, then lookup tables and uh, CLVs, those are designed in a full custom manner. After it is designed, it will be repeated to design the FPGA. Similarly, analog blocks like ADC, PLL, all these will be designed in a full custom manner. ADC, PLL, all these are designed in a full custom manner. If a design where which is cannot be done using semi custom design style, then you can adopt full custom design style to optimize the design. So, what is standard cell? Standard cell is basically uh, a type of cell. Uh, it is the basic uh, building block for any digital design. So, if you can see one of the uh, basic uh, structure of this one, it has a fixed height. All the cells of your standard cell have a same height or multiple of the same height, either same height or multiple of that height. Then second thing is that the width is not also random. It is multiple of height of let us say inverter height of NAND gate both are same, but width will be different. Width is the multiple of unit tile what is defined in your technology file. Okay. So, height is same for both the cases, here it is H, here it is also H. Okay. And the widths are multiple of the unit tile defined in the technology library. And height is also uh, not comes uh, randomly, it has some rules, it depends upon how many metal tracks it is allowed. If it is a 9 tracks library, so you have 9 uh, tracks in the uh, your standard cells. So, it is uh, uh, one, uh, it is pre designed by uh, some company and you can utilize that for your designs. They are rigorously tested and characterized library, they provide uh, uh, library files, timing files, power uh, um, characterization files, those files are uh, rigorously tested and provided to the designer, RTL designer or PD designer, the physical design engineers. So, then uh, he, they have uh, basically let us say feed through cells. So, let us look, look into this, these are the if you can see all cell A, cell B, cell C, cell, cell D all heights are same, but widths are, widths are different okay. and uh, heights are de determined by the number of metal one tracks uh, which is used in the standard cell and the width of the cell will be multiple of the unit tile. Then if you can see here, this is a very older design where you have uh, basically uh, less number of metal tracks are there. So, the, such that so uh, they introduce some something called channels between the placement of the standard cells to these are the standard cells actually. This is one to these are standard cells and these are the channels actually. Okay. So, between the channels, uh, this these are the channels uh, basically uh, between the channels they, they do, do the routing. And uh, they, since number of clears is uh, uh, metal lines is uh, smaller, they have something called feed through cells in earlier designs. So, that the uh, metal connections can come from one uh, channel to the other channel. Okay. But nowadays, uh, these uh, empty resources are filled with the standard cells also because we use high level metals to connect them. Okay. So, so, this is the backgrounds uh, behind uh, your uh, standard cell uh, design. And if you can see here, you have a VDD line, one uh, top line is your VDD and you have a ground line is your, this is your ground. Okay. Let us say this is uh, your ground and let us say this is your VDD. Okay. So, this is standard cell design style. So, it, uh, you have a RTL then you target uh, this uh, standard cell library to synthesize, do the synthesis process. So, it is uh, basically less time consuming, uh, simpler than full custom design style and it occupies uh, 
more cheap area compared to obviously more, more cheap area because it is not a cost, full custom design. Uh, but uh, as the technology scales into lower technology nodes, it uh, the full custom way of designing and uh, standard civil way of designing will area wise will, there will be lot, not lot of penalties there in terms of area or performance. So, area uh, penalty is very very small, but only uh, advantage of the standard cell based design cell is that uh, it is very fast, full custom will take more time to design. And uh, if we have more time to design means you will lose the time to market. So, standard cell based design style is more popular compared to full custom design style in case of digital design flow. So, now you have a cell based design. So, there is the second category which is the macro cell. Macro cells are little bigger and uh, in case of standard cell there is some constraint in placing the cells. Th those will be placed row wise, okay. all the row wise it will be placed. But in case of macro cell, those constraint is a little bit relaxed based on the uh, size of the cell we need to find out a area to place that one. For example, uh, basically you have a memory compiler uh, which generates a memory block, we need to uh, find out a area inside the chip uh, uh, to put it there such that the distance from other uh, uh, the memory access units all the distance would be optimized. So, you have a larger logic component uh, with re reusable functionality and uh, it, uh, it is uh, it can be simple or it can be highly complex, it can be uh, used as an embedded processor also and memory blocks. Let us say here you see you have a RAM, random access memory and you have something called programmable logic array. All these uh, can be generated using some kind of uh, uh, pro means uh, they can be provided by third party to be used directly and uh, which is uh, there is no constraint in placing the cells. So, it is very useful and that IP will if you do by cost full custom method it will take more time, but these cells you can let us say if you have a memory compiler you can specify the size of your memory it will generate the memory in very very less time. So, that you can use that memory in your design. So, uh, whatever I told it can be placed anywhere in the layout to optimize the routing distance and electrical property. Basically, uh, we need to optimize everything, we need to optimize the power performance everything. So, we need to optimize the interconnect distance. So, you need to place uh, the macro cells in such a place such that our uh, uh, delay uh, will be minimum. So, some cases we can use uh, some pre existing macro to optimize our design uh, to complete our design. So, then we have a uh, uh, gate array. So, there are two types of array based design style one is called uh, uh, gate array, one of them is gate array. So, which uh, basically we have identical cells, gate arrays are means some identical cells are there which is placed in array fashion like a matrix like format. Okay. So, throughout the chip those cells are repeated and whenever you are doing a RTL or something we need to convert that to the gate array to connect the uh, cells actually. Circuit is divided into identical blocks each of the equ uh, each equivalent to the cell on the gate array. So, this uh, basically your design is mapped and uh, placed on the prefabricated cells during partitioning. Okay. Blocks are mapped or placed onto the prefabricated cell during partitioning. Basically, what we need to do is that we need to uh, map, we need to have a tool which will map our RTL or the main design to these uh, gate array designs automatically such that our actual design is implemented in the gate array. So, it is of two category one is uncommitted gate array, one is committed gate array. What is the difference between uncommitted and committed? In the com uncommitted gate array we need uh, the help of a foundry facility okay, because those cells are placed, but there is no routing was done. Okay. So, on the top of it we need to do the routing to complete our design. So, these are prefabricated chip where the routing layers are added on the top 
uh, to in the route uh, fabrication facility. So it is expensive because we have to send the uh, we need to buy the gate array and uh, we need to define the uh, routing layers, send that design to the fab, then the fab will do the connections. So it is expensive, but it obviously will get more uh, performance out of it. But more uh, cheaper one is basically committed gate array. Gate array designed with full custom routing layer. La routing layers are there already in case of the committed gate, gate array, but you need to do the programming to connect the routings based on our requirement. Here if you can see, uh, 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 here if you can see these are called on committed uh, gate array, on committed gate array means that all the cells are repeated like a RA fashion. Oh, this is one of the basic building block which is repeated multiple times. So, your actual design will be mapped to this one and we need to create the routing layer above it such that our actual design will be created which requires the help of a foundry. Uh, this is an example of committed gate array. What is happening here is that you have uh, uh, pins like A, B, C here. So, here your A, this is the pin A is connected to this pad, B is connected to this part and the C is connected to this pad. And if you can see here how many uh, NAND gates are there, uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, here 5 cell will be used, each one of them is programmed for a NAND operation and those connections are made. Okay. So, here if you can see 5 cells are used, uh, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So, here if you can see 5 cells are used, finally you will get the output. So, these connections are done using some programming, okay. connecting uh, through some kind of programming. So, this one is uh, cost effective, less cost because you do not need to send it to the foundry and uh, it is easy, uh, easier to produce than full cost um, standard cell design, It is, uh, uh, but it is less flexible. You cannot optimize like uh, full custom or a standard cell based design style. And routing in the gate array is simpler, it is basically very, very simpler compared to any design style and it is also uh, basically the uh, focus on routing rather than uh, we, we need to implement the design uh, such a way that it can be implemented in less time. It takes less time to implement the whole design. So, now we have a uh, field programmable gate array. The field pro programmable gate array, it is basically more popular these days. What is the main idea behind it? It is programmable uh, interconnect, programmable uh, uh, I.O and it has programmable uh, lookup tables. It has three things, programmable I.O, uh, programmable interconnect, programmable logic blocks. Okay. The, the, all the things are programmable in case of FPGA and uh, it is uh, highly popular because uh, it uh, has the reconfigurability facility, programmability is there and of course, large scale integration lots of very new things are now incorporated inside the FPGA and it is very popular architecture nowadays. Okay. So, uh, logic blocks in FPGA uh, are like memory blocks basically if you program the memory blocks then it will program your lookup tables. Okay. So, the it consists of uh, logic block separated by routing channels, these LUTs and the programmable switches are uh, uh, programmed in uh, using that uh, uh, tools actually. Okay. You have a uh, logic element, this is logic element, this is called switch box, the switch box are basically um, interconnects which is programmable in the runtime. And logic elements uh, consist of CLB, configurable logic block. Uh, logic elements are consist of uh, configurable logic block, then slices, then LUTs. Okay. So, you can implement both combinational and sequential design using the, these uh, CLBs. And it has first uh, basically uh, carry chain logic to implement fast adders. 
ok. So, here if you have a gate label design which is mapped to the uh, your uh, um, lookup table uh, using the tools actually ok. This uh, P1 is mapped to this uh, uh, table uh, then P2 is mapped to this one, P3 is mapped to this one then the P4 is mapped to this one and it will finally implement your design. So, this is uh, one of the uh, flow, pl flow plan of uh, APJ where your design is implemented, interconnected. So, you have three things whatever I told you one is programmable IO, programmable interconnect and programmable logic block or configurable logic block all the things are programmable in case of a FPG. Uh, now we will discuss about uh, basically the design abstraction level there are different levels of abstraction. So, whenever you would uh, talk about a system or a processor we are looking for a chip as a processor. But if you go inside the detail of uh, what is inside the processor we have modules. Modules are basically different blocks inside the, the processor or a system how they are connected with each other and the each of the blocks individual blocks how it is implemented. If you go inside one of the module how the gates are there different logic gates are there that is called gate label. Then if you go inside a gate you have transistors NMOS and PMOS transistors. So, those are how they are connected with each other to create the logic gates ok. So, that is your circuits. If I look into uh, each of the transistor like NMOS or a PMOS how they are implemented in the silicon this is called the device. So, these are the different levels of abstraction uh, whenever you we go from a system to the device. The in the top you look for a processor in the below we look for the very detail how the transistor is implemented inside the uh, inside the chip. So, so here this is very top level view and this is uh, very bottom level view. Okay. So, we need to understand each one of them we need to optimize at each level of abstraction to optimize the complete system. So, we need to optimize in the device level, we need to optimize in the circuit level, we need to optimize in the gate level, we need to optimize in the module level and finally, we need to optimize how the modules are connected such that my um, more important targets like performance, power and area these are the three targets one is the performance or speed then area then the power minimum these three things should be satisfied. So, uh, in case of abstraction the repeat uh, basically what is happening inside abstraction we, it is uh, uh, it is showing some of the features without disclosing the more detailed what is inside it ok. So, let us say if I look into a processor I do not look into what type of transistor is implemented when whenever I look into a order I do not know what kind of order is implemented in silicon. So, the processor of different architecture whether it is a disk architecture or a CISC architecture. So, it has different uh, abstraction level like architecture level one is logic level and geometrical level there are three levels of abstractions are there. Okay. So, each one of them can be represented using architectural model into more detailed models like geometrical models. So, we are refining the models from architectural model to the geometrical model such that it can be suitable for manufacturing in a particular technology node and finally, we will get a chip back which can be used in different applications. It can be used in a mobile phone, it can be used in a general purpose processor like a laptop ok. So, here if you can see you have architectural label. So, here if you see here some label uh, example is given here PC equal to PC plus 1 fetch PC decode instruction. What does it mean that we are incrementing the program counter and after the program counter is in incremented we are fetching the instruction from the memory then you are decoding the instruction using using the decoder. So, it is written in a architectural label 
okay and uh, uh, we can uh, represent that one using flow diagram or atl model also or you can write it in some different language also like a high level language so the processor uh, basically described by an hdl hdl stands for hardware description language so we can represent that one is also in terms of hdl so here if you can see uh, we have logic level what is the we, we are doing here we are dealing with the logic gates we have nand nor xor aoi plenty of different gates are there so those gates okay are uh, used to implement that rtl okay so you have a gate level schematic whatever it is given here that is called logic level so here your design is represented in terms of schematic level so here we are going for geometrical level geometrical level means that we are doing the layouts okay so whatever the logic what is represented in terms of schematic now we are converting that schematic to layouts because the layout is the thing which is uh, basically understood by the foundry that the foundry can understand they cannot understand your uh, logic gates they cannot understand your rtl they only understand uh, the layouts okay so this is the two dimensional geometrical picture uh, which will translate into the mask layouts to be printed in the silicon so there are uh, different types of views are there behavioral structural and physical okay so uh, basically in case of behavioral circuit is the uh, explained regardless of its implementation how it will be implemented doesn't matter i need a order so it is let's say for example your pc equal to pc plus 1 okay the program counter will be incremented by 1 how it is implemented doesn't matter for me i i just need the increment of the program counter but in case of uh, structural view it will be more detail where you will uh, it will say about the interconnection of the components how these components are connected with each other in case of physical view we are dealing with the transistor the physical object how they are represented in terms of transistors this is a y chart uh, which is uh, uh, which is basically proposed by gajaski and kohuns and if you can see here uh, we have a behavioral domain we have a structural domain we have a geometrical or physical domain three of them are here so we describe our behavior in terms of a algorithm then we translate that to using some form of a processor which is in a structural do domain then we can go to the chip floor plan then we'll go to the finite state machine then we go to the uh, register and uh, alu arithmetic logic unit then we'll go internally and finally we implement everything in terms of transistor placement then we go to the mask and implement our design so this is most popular y chart which is used to de the design from system level specification to the layout which will send to the foundry to design your system completely and implement and send it back the chip to you okay so now we'll talk about synthesis synthesis basically transformation from one of the view to the other view so we are, how we are moving from one view to the other view that is called synthesis so uh, synthesis is basically movement or transformation from one view to the other view there are three types of uh, uh, synthesis one is called architectural level synthesis one is called logic level synthesis one is called geometrical level synthesis so architectural level synthesis logic level synthesis and geometrical level synthesis so in case of architectural level synthesis we we basically have a bigger picture of our design that pc equal to pc plus 1 fetch pc decode instruction all these are written in very high level language then we'll move to how the blocks are connected with each other we need a adder we need a multiplier we need a memory we need a controller all these how they are connected with each other this is called uh, architectural level synthesis and in case of a logic level uh, synthesis we 
finally get a logic gate label implementation. Let us say it is a RTL, it is a data flow statements because we are using data flow operators like plus and uh, basically uh, this RTL can be converted to gate label netlist. So, th that is called called your logic label synthesis. In this case, we are moving from uh, RTL to the gate label netlist. So, this is RTL, this is RTL, this is gate label. In case of geometrical label synthesis, we have uh, gate label. to the layout, layout label or geometrical label. So, we are moving from uh, your gate label to the layout label that is called geometrical label synthesis or physical synthesis. Okay. So, basically in this uh, uh, lecture we discussed about different design style and uh, uh, there are several design style like full custom, semi custom and standard cell based design style and macro cell based uh, design style. Then we discuss about uh, array based design style. We also highlight the significance of uh, different levels of abstraction using architectural label and logic label and uh, geometrical label. Uh, and uh, the, this uh, we discuss about uh, different types of synthesis flow. Uh, all these are very, very important in case of system level design. Thank you very much.